Hi, I'm Anka and this is the place to be to hear about the latest tech trends in healthcare. From early cave paintings to the first printed documents to today's modern cloud computing, we have always looked for ways to store and transmit information. Experts estimate that more than 2.7 zettabytes of data exist in the digital world today and 90% of it has been created in the last couple of years. Digital storage requires huge resources and that is, doesn't stand well the test of time. But we are on the verge of creating a revolutionary new data storage method, our DNA. Welcome to today's video. Did you know that the DNA was not discovered by American biologist James Watson and English physicist Francis Crick like everybody usually thinks. In reality, DNA was first identified in the late 1860s by a chemist named Frederick Mischer. Mischer's plan was to isolate and analyze not the DNA, which nobody knew existed at that time, but instead the protein components of white blood cells. So he made arrangements for a local surgical clinic to send him used patients' bandages coated in pus which contain white blood cells. Once he received the bandages, he planned to wash, filter them, and extract the white blood cells and the various proteins within those cells. But when he came across a substance that had chemical properties unlike any protein, Mischer realized that he had discovered a new substance, DNA. Over 160 years after Mischer discovered what would later be called the DNA, scientists and engineers are looking into one of the most impressive features of this molecule, its capacity to store our genetic information. But why DNA? For multiple reasons. First of all, DNA is very robust. Unlike hard drives or even telephones that are quite fragile and often need replacing. When you think about it, Scientists were able to find DNA of humans and animals that lived thousands of years ago. DNA is also very dense, meaning that a lot of data can be stored in a very tiny place, reducing the need for huge warehouses filled with servers. Another argument is the way DNA encodes information. Just like computers store data in binary form with zeros and ones, DNA uses bases, which can be A, T, C, or G. But how do we store data in DNA? First of all, we need to convert bits into A, T, C, and G, much like we translate one language into another. Once we have the bases that make the data we want to store, we can create the DNA or synthesize it. We then store it, and when necessary, we can read it using a device called a sequencer. That gives us the basis that we can then translate back into bits. It is as simple as that. In a demonstration, a scientist from Harvard Medical School encoded in DNA music from the game Super Mario Bros. Other scientists encoded Netflix videos, Amazon gift cards, or even running instructions for a connected object in the device itself. So why don't we store data in DNA already? Although synthesizing and sequencing DNA sounds like a fun experiment, there are a few practical challenges. For one, after being sequenced, the DNA is lost. This is part of the sequencing technique. So you need to make several copies of that bit of DNA before sequencing it if you don't want to lose the information. Another aspect that's important is that the more copies, the more room for mistake. In our bodies, we have proteins that repair the DNA each time there's a mistake. But in synthetic DNA, there are no such proteins, so the risk for error is much higher. So storing data in DNA is much more challenging and slower than storing it on a hard drive. This is why researchers are mainly focusing on storing long-term data only on DNA, such as archives. We are just at the beginning of DNA data storage. But one thing is certain. Nature has been using it for years to store our genetic information. So why not follow the lead? If you want to continue this conversation, head over to our website for more content and the unique opportunity to sign up to our next conference. 
thank you so much for watching once again, and I'll see you next time.